Today I'm talking to John Trainer, COO of C Labs, about uh, the Industrial Internet of Things. Welcome, John. All right. Great to be here, Greg. Thank you. Okay. So let's get started like this. There are a lot of companies and a lot of folks really talking about the, the Industrial Internet of Things. Um, what does C Labs focus on? Well, in a nutshell, we say that we help conduct or connect the factory floor, the concrete floor, to the carpeted floor of the enterprise, the IT, the corporate network. There's lots of solutions and lots of systems that work on the factory floor, but historically they've been isolated from IT. Now we've got companies wanting to get value out of what's on their production floor. They need to get it into IT systems. And we've got to get the OT guys and the IT guys talking to one another. And that's really where C-Labs technology and products shine. Okay. We're still at the stage, I, I think, where um, companies like to see real examples of this. Can you tell, tell me about some real examples about how your customers might benefit from this technology? Yeah, absolutely. One of the big ways we see uh, OEM equipment makers uh, benefiting from this is their ability to really transform and change their business models. Uh, so for example, being able to get data out of a machine that's installed in a customer site historically has been very difficult to do. You needed permission of the customer, you needed to work with their IT organization, but now you've got equipment makers. For example, we're working with one uh, major company that makes lasers that work in the sheet metal fabrication uh, arena. They're now able to extract data to do predictive maintenance, and so therefore they can offer a service level guarantee to their customers based on the performance of the machines uh, on the plant floor. And we see examples like that with other machine makers and in other industries as well. Yeah, I, I can see that as well. What, what would you say is the difference in, in approach or perspective from those equipment makers and the equipment users in the plant? Well, clearly, you know, the, the equipment makers want to have something that enables something unique in their particular machines or their equipment, or they want to change their business model from selling a piece of capital equipment, uh, perhaps to selling a product as a service. And they want to do it for their particular machines and have that be something that's special for them. From the equipment user standpoint, they may own equipment from a variety of different vendors, and so they want to be able to collect and use data together across multiple different vendors. And so C-Labs allows both of those things to happen simultaneously. We can give information to equipment machine makers and suppliers about their unique specific equipment with a security model that says we can also aggregate data across many different types of equipment to give the owner of the plant information about the uh, machine from supplier A and supplier B and supplier C and so on. And so same data, but really two different perspectives and two different use cases. Okay. Well, the power of some of this seems to me is, is more about uh, transformation than incremental improvements. Uh, can you give some examples about um, how the equipment makers might think about changing their business models? Absolutely. You know, in industrial automation, the decision cycles tend to be very long. The capital investment cycles are very long. A lot of this equipment is, is used for, uh, for decades. And so really being able to shift to a model where instead of selling somebody a piece of capital equipment, perhaps they can sell a, a service, this so-called product as a service transformation. Uh, I recently talked to a company that makes crane controls. And one of the things that impacts a crane is how much work it actually does. But historically in that industry, the people who are making cranes available are renting them for use on construction sites or at oil wells or other locations, just based on the size of the crane and the amount of time it, it sits there on the site. What really matters though is how much work the crane does, how much lifting it does, how much stress there is on the equipment itself. If you can get that data in near real time, then you can really charge the customer for the work the crane is doing, not just the amount of time it's sitting there on a site. That really changes the cost model for somebody who needs to use a crane, but also the business model for somebody who provides that to a customer. And so the idea that you stop selling equipment and you start selling the service that that equipment provides, I think is a huge transformation that's enabled by IoT and technology from C-Labs like our factory relay by providing information in real time makes that transition possible. Okay, great, that's a, that's a great example. Well, you know, we know uh, that there are a lot of companies that are kind of dabbling in Internet of Things and maybe they've got a pilot somewhere or something like that. What's, what's holding them back from a full-scale deployment? 
You know, when we talk to customers and we look at the research, there's really you know, two things that holds people back. First, it's just the concern about threats to data or physical security or sort of their IP that's, that's captured in the machine uh, data. And it's also the inability of IT systems to keep up with this change. You know, OT networks used to be completely isolated from IT networks, and you didn't have to worry about it if you were the CIO, the chief information officer, or the chief security officer, the CSO. Now somebody wants to plug a cable in there and extract data and expose the plant floor to the internet, if you will, or put data up in the cloud. And people aren't sure they know how to deal with that, and that really, really slows things down. By having technology and tools that are fully manageable by IT and really are done and designed in an IT-friendly way, we can ease that transition for people so that they can move more quickly. I've talked to lots of people who say, well, we did an, an IoT trial. We downloaded some machine data, and we had a file that we gave to somebody, and they did some processing, some analytics. But we don't know how to do that on a daily basis. We can't always have people pulling those files and sort of shuttling them off. We need something where live data is continuously flowing, and yet we don't know how to make that work with our IT policies and our firewalls and our routers and all the configuration we have to do. Whereas a C-Labs factory relay is manageable by IT, makes it easy to have that data not just be available for a pilot, but flow continuously. So we hope as customers discover those things in the marketplace, they'll move from all of those evaluations and trials to trusting technology like C-Labs factory relay to give a live continuous stream of data to equipment manufacturers, to analytics products, or just internally to their own IT systems. Hmm. Okay, that's great. Well, thanks for taking some time with me today. I really enjoyed it. I've been speaking to John Trainer of C-Labs. Thanks for watching.